Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are going to unbox the Eco Tank 8550, which prints 13 by 19. So stick around. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for swinging by. If you've watched any of my videos in the past, you may have watched the unboxing of my Eco Tank 2720 which is back here and prints sublimation prints either eight and a half by 11 or eight and a half by 14. I think you can even go longer if you have like rolled paper, but that's as large as I have gone. So I decided that it was time that I was going to need some bigger prints. So I've been having a really hard time finding an Eco Tank 1500, which is one that is very similar to the 2720 where it takes the four different ink colors and it is an Epson that you can, you know, convert with the EcoTank system and the little special inks with the little pop tabs that fit in the cartridge, in the, in the printer properly. So I researched and I went the next best route for 13 um, by 19 prints without having to do a workforce printer which you could do and get the larger size prints but those need like chips or little cartridges that you can refill this is an eco tank so it uses the same kind of inks that the 2720 does it's got the little pop tab that just you pop them in and they refill the only difference with the 8550 is it is a photo printer so it has two extra inks it has the black the cyan the yellow the magenta but then it has gray and it has photo black so it has several different colors there and it made it a little bit more difficult to find the inks so i had to research some ink companies and i found one called ink x pro on etsy which i was able to order it was the one that was going to get here the quickest which is and it had good reviews so it was the one i went with some of the other ones have good reviews as well, except they were not going to be here for even longer. So I went with these and it gives you the two extra colors, the gray and the photo black. Now, the thing with that is, and the difference between this and the EcoTank 1500 is, is that, or is it 15,000? I think I've been saying 1500, but it's actually 15,000. The biggest thing is, is that we won't really have to mess with the settings very much. It is going to basically plug in. We're going to change a couple little things and it's going to be ready to print. We're not going to have to do what we did on the 2720 where we went through and we changed all of these settings to make sure that it was going to print properly because with the two extra colors, it just makes the colors more dynamic and less where you have to play with them because it's just got more colors to pull from. So we're going to unbox this, get it set up. I'm going to show you how to set it up in the computer and then we're going to do a test print and see how it goes. So let's go. All right. So let's get this thing unboxed. I'm going to just open up the box. Hopefully my bookshelf here, I did move the 2720 down a level. Well, actually down two levels. Okay. So that I could hopefully fit this on the top of the bookcase so big okay so it came with something plastic which is interesting hmm. keep this plastic bag away from children okay no problem we'll do I'm not really sure what this is for open this up and see Well, we have a big bag. All right, then. I'm assuming this is if I need to return it. I'm not really sure. So we will just fold that up and put that to the side. All right. Next up, we have the CD disc that came with it, as well as the setup book, which we are going to open the setup book just to make sure. We don't miss any steps, but I probably will not be using the disc. Most of the time, all the drivers and everything can be downloaded from the online site. Way easier than everything else. You have your warranty, which we're about to void the warranty. So just FYI, 
If you are paying $599 for this printer, please be aware that once you convert it to sublimation, you are voiding the warranty. If you want to keep your warranty, um, Epson does make a sublimation printer. So you could go with that. But for the price I paid for this one, you are going to get a sublimation printer that is only eight and a half by 11. So I wanted the larger print. That was specifically what I was looking for. Um, the Ecotake 15,000s are about the same price. The problem is I couldn't find one anywhere. And I've actually read some reviews from people who have started to purchase this new version of the Ecotank and they really like it. So I figured why not? So the only thing is that I can't use my Printer's Jack inks unless Printer's Jack you'd like to make some six color inks for this. That would be super. Speaking of inks, these are the inks that are coming with the printer. Um, we are not even going to open this box because with sublimation, again, do not put the ink that comes with the printer in the printer because this is regular printer ink. You have to have sublimation ink. So many people ruin their brand new printers. Well, they don't ruin them, but you have to go through all these steps to suck up the regular ink and then make sure it's all clean, do like a novel clean and all this stuff. And then, then you have to put the regular ink in it. So please don't put your ink in there. So let's see what's in here. It's packed pretty well. The ink was right here on the side. And then this is packed in pretty good. It had these little things here. Oh, and then these just come right off. That's nice. I thought I was going to have to try and pull it out with them connected. So that's helpful. And we're just going to pull this out and then move the box out of the way. So now we have another great big bag covering the new printer. Oh, it's so pretty. Look how pretty this is, guys. All right, so take the plastic off. And I guess we'll do the little start here menu just to check on everything. Obviously, you want to unpack it all and then take all the tape off. This is very similar to what we already did with our eco tank. So we're just going to start peeling these off. Make sure you get all of the blue stickers off because if you don't, then things may not want to work right. you can do eight and a half by 13 um, eight and a half by 13 scanning so that's kind of nice oh, this is weird hmm. sorry that's kind of loud and it just does like that and you can extend your paper or make it smaller so for me, this one is going to be used with this super large 13 by 19 A sub paper that I already ordered and have. See, that's going to fit nicely in there. Um, and then I'm going to keep my 2720 at least for right now um, until I make sure I like this because I don't want to have to switch the papers back and forth. Okay, so let's see if I got all... So, there we go. Okay, and then this is our ink for our ink and our thing there. Um, I just realized where's my plug? Oh, I bet it's in here. We do have to open up the box, the forbidden box. Dun, dun, dun. Yep, there's your cable, so don't forget that. And then close the box back up and put it to the side. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put this up on the bookcase and get it ready to plug in and get these settings going. Here is the power cable on this side which of course is further away from the plug, but we'll make it work. Oh. There we go. Just go until you kind of hear a little bit. USB, so if you want to hook this up directly to your computer, you can. All right. I 
Okay guys, so you see I kind of am in a different area. So because of the wide format paper rear filled area, this is where you put the larger paper, which is what I'm going to be using this printer for. I actually had to move it over here on my desk. So I've got some adjustments to make. It's kind of a mess right now because I had to shuffle some stuff around. So a couple things to note that I kind of fiddled with while I was kind of off the um, camera. This would be open just whenever I'm filling my paper and using it. And then of course I'd want to close it whenever I'm not using it so that no dust or anything gets in there. Okay. And then the front, the gray is where we would load if I was going to use my eight and a half by 11 paper. However, this white tray, do not open it. It is actually going to auto open whenever it is printing a document, apparently. So we'll have to test that out whenever we get this printing a test print because you, you shouldn't be opening or closing that yourself. It does that um, automatically. So it actually looks like it's the CD burner. Maybe that's it too. Um, it's got a little CD drive on here. I did read on the internet. You can actually burn discs on here. Maybe it's just printing straight to them. Maybe the top so you can customize. I'm not really sure. So we'll find out when we get all of this attached. The instructions that came with it don't really list a lot about the paper, like the rear feeder or anything like that. It tells you to go online and read the full manual there. So we will fiddle with that as we get to it. So some other really neat features. You have the SD card reader, which is really helpful. So if you have, if you want to print some photos, um, and you weren't using this for sublimation, you could put your SD disc in there. Or if you have your sublimation designs all ready to print, you could just, you know, use your SD drive if you needed to do that. Another really cool feature is, is that the display pops up and down, which is really nice. Down here, it has what colors are in each of your little trays here. So, and we're going to fill that ink in just a minute. Let me show you a couple other really small things real quick. So once I pull this up and let it kind of pop up, there we go. Um, there's a really neat thing here, which it took me a second to, or there's a really neat thing right here, which is something new. Um, I've never had to do this in another printer, but apparently when your inks and stuff get full or like your maintenance tray, if you ever have to do a maintenance check on your printer, apparently this printer makes it super easy to replace. You don't have to go all the way in the back and do anything with unscrewing it. You just literally pop that and then you pull this out like this and your maintenance tray is ready to be tossed and replaced. So if your printer's having a lot of issues and you've had it for a little while, it could be that you need a new maintenance tray and that's something to try and they make it super easy. Okay, so now I've already got it plugged in. So our next step is we need to fill the inks, but first we have to turn our printer on. So we're just gonna hit the power button. I've got my inks ready to go, lined up in the order they are going to go in, just to make sure that I don't accidentally mess it up. Black, photo black, cyan, yellow, magenta, and the gray. So first things first, yep, we want English. And continue set up without the app. Um, I'm not going to use the app right now. I mostly will, when I do sublimation, I usually print from Photoshop, which I use my computer. So I'm going to set up without the app for right now. Um, the trays down here, by the way, your, your level one tray that's going to hold your eight and a half by 11 paper can hold up to a hundred sheets. And then your back tray, you just... Put your paper in as you go and it actually will go as high as um as large as a 78.7 length so you get those in the rolls and then you cut them down to whatever size you need so that's pretty cool okay so we have this ready to go so first thing we're going to do is get our ink when filling the ink make sure not to squeeze the ink bottle ink may splash also make sure to match the color of the ink bottle and the ink tank and again you want sublimation ink Please make sure you do not put the ink that came with it. Again, I'm doing Ink X Pro because it was one that was recommended in one of the groups that I'm in. And it says to go ahead and fill the black ink. I'm just gonna lift that. I'm gonna pop up the gray. It's got the colors here again. And again, I've got them in order. 
okay? And it's telling us it wants us to start with the black. So I'm gonna move those back up against there. So we're gonna pop up the blue cap and then we're going to unscrew this just to make sure. Oh, I didn't realize these had the little silver things. I already unwrapped them just to make it go faster, but apparently I missed that these had. Oh, this makes me nervous because I feel like I'm going to get it everywhere. All right, guys. So I had to open each one of these bottles and I had to use some gloves because I had already gotten some ink on my hand. So I have them in the order that they're going to go in here. Black. We're going to just double check. Black. Photo black cyan, yellow, magenta, and gray. So I have them in order. Now these, what they do is you just have to twist. Kind of makes me nervous because I feel like I'm untwisting the part that goes to the ink. So I'm just going to kind of, so I already took the, me the metallic pieces off the inside the foil and peeled them off. I wore some gloves and I used a pair of scissors to cut around to make it easier. So we're going to start with the black and you can see that the notches go like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to dump it straight. Whew, makes me nervous. And right into the cartridge. And all you have to do is set it there. It's going to fill. You can hear it. Filling into the tank. You can see it starting to fill the tank up here. See, there it goes. Now, when it gets to the fill line right here, apparently it auto stops filling. So we're just waiting on it to get to the fill line. And then it's supposed to stop filling. Okay, and it's stopped. It's at the fill line, so we're just going to peel this up as gently as possible. Flip it quick. Barely anything on it. And then there is a little bit more in there, I believe. So we're just going to tighten that and put that aside for later use. Okay, and we're going to do that with the next one. You want to close that up. And then next it says do the PB, the photo black. So I'm going to pop that one unscrew that lid and that is the best thing about the eco tank because a lot of the sublimation ones they just pop in there so easily photo black photo black just triple triple checking we're gonna pop it right on there and there it goes you can see we'll go back to one of the first ones you can kind of see that there's probably this bottom piece of ink left in the bottles a little the darker ones are a little hard to see let's see if we can see blue a little better well maybe there's a little more than I thought but yeah I guess it goes up to about here where that white line is on most of them so it did use the majority of the bottle to fill them up we're going to click proceed, press OK, oh, here. put that back down, press OK for five seconds. One, two, three, four. Oh, make sure that all the color inks are filled up to the upper line on the ink tank. Select start button to start ink charging. Do not load paper until initialization is complete. And what I know and what it said in the little booklet is this takes about seven minutes. So I'll come back when this is done. After I click start, and it takes about seven minutes. It says, do not power off until it's done. Okay, so it's finished. I don't even think it took seven minutes. Um, before I do anything else, I am going to load some paper real quick in tray one. Actually, tray two, set two. There's our eight and a half by 11. Tray one only does... Um, like a six by 10 or something like that, four by six, I don't know, something like that. I won't be using it, so, and then again, you don't wanna mess with the white one. Okay, now I'm gonna keep the white, just plain paper in there, because again, I plan to only use the large rear paper to actually um, print sublimation on this one as of right now. 
So I'm going to keep just plain paper in here so that whenever it does checks, it can make sure that it's just printing from my plain paper and not my nice sublimation ink. Okay, so it says initializ initialization is complete. Some ink absorbed into the maintenance box. You may see some black parts on it, but it is normal. Proceed to the print adjustment. So we're going to go to adjust. Align the printer to get the best print quality. You can adjust it later, but I'm going to go ahead and adjust it. Perform a print head nozzle check to check print quality. I am going to go ahead and do that as well. It says load letter A4 size paper to nozzle check pattern. Paper to nozzle. Okay, so it's going to print that nozzle check. Oh, where's it? Oh, ah, so cool. That's why you're not supposed to mess with that tray because it comes out automatically. Okay, that's pretty cool. I mean, I kind of wouldn't mind having one of these just to print print on. How nice would that be? Okay. So I do have a couple spots. Check the printer pattern and select the closer result. Most of them are fine. I have a two little splotches here, but for the most part, they all print it normal. So the closest result is going to be this one. Align print position to fix misalignment and banding. So go ahead. Perform five types of alignment in order. Load six sheets of letter paper. I, I loaded a stack. Print. Okay. So it's just going to print and check through everything. So if it's just like what it did on my um, EcoTank 2720, it's going to print. It's going to ask me a question. It's going to print again. It's going to ask me a question, kind of like what it just did with this. So we'll see. Okay. Select the pattern that shows no gap or dark line. This is number one. This is number two. Okay. So number one. The best one, I think I'm going to go with number five. Ugh, that's hard. They all look kind of the same. Okay, number two. Let's go with number one. Okay, so I'm just going to print again. Okay. All right, so choose the square with the fewest streaks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Number one is going to be number seven. And number 10 is going to be five. Whew. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, hopefully this one's shorter. Okay, I got one of these again. All right. So number one, we're looking for a pattern that shows no gap or dark line. Number six. Okay. It's going to print out four out of the five. So we have two more to go. Number four, number five. Hopefully this one's a short one. Okay. Number one, choose the rectangles that are not separated or overlapped. Okay. And we're going to do the last one. Hopefully that one's not dumb. This one will be better. Choose the rectangles that are not separated or overlap. That line through there has me a little nervous. Okay. All right. We're going to go back to maintenance because I want to do that. I think it's the print nozzle check. Print a pattern to see if it needs cleaning. I think I want to do that one again. That was that first one we did. Um, and it just makes me a little nervous because it had those couple blank lines. I don't know where it went. It's in here somewhere. This one. Still has some lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, because I just would rather be safe than sorry. So we're going to put that it's got the X because it does have some breaks. So it's going to do a cleaning, but I think I'd rather it do that because I'm a little concerned about these little breaks. There's one on the yellow. It's hard to see, but it's there. 
the rest of them are okay, but I think I'd rather do the cleaning now than waste a 13 by 19 sheet of paper. So this takes about three minutes, so I'll be back with you guys in just a minute. So I finished the cleaning. It looks like it's printing out the report right now, so hopefully we just don't have any more of those gaps. Oh! Well, the gaps are still there. They're almost worse. They're in the exact same spot. Actually, they're a little bit better. Everything else looks perfect. So, what I actually did was I ended up going to Google and I found this CMYK color copy that I could print on my printer. I printed it in full color and it came out perfect. Once it printed, I ran that nozzle check again and my lines were all solid and no gaps. Yay! So next thing we need to do is set the Wi-Fi up. So we're going to go to, I don't want to do my smartphone. Um, we're going to, no, I don't want to do, yeah, network settings. We're going to do Wi-Fi, recommended connection method when a Wi-Fi router is available. Oh, okay. So we're going to do Wi-Fi. And we're going to do, we're not going to do the push button setup because that's where you have to go push the button. I never can get that correct. So we're just going to do the setup wizard and I have the password here so I can get that going. Searching for the router and we're looking for TARDIS because we are Doctor Who fans. So, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and try this first one. It shows that I have two. I'm not really sure why, so we're just going to try to enter the password and see what happens. You need to make sure that you have them set the printer on the same as your computer. Since this one has a nice large screen, makes it a lot easier during stuff like this. And I have a techie person as my significant other. So to say that he likes very detailed, elaborate passwords is... An understatement. Hopefully I got that right. Let's see. Hopefully I got it set up correctly. Should connect to our router. And then we can go about downloading our drivers on our computer. So hopefully. So I'm going to put my computer over here just so we can kind of see what's going on. Set it complete. Yay, it connected to the Wi-Fi. Excellent. So I'm going to just click home. So we're back on here. Oh, this is a beautiful menu screen. Large. It makes it really easy to find things. I love it. Okay, so um, I'm going to keep you on the phone instead of recording on my computer because I want to be able to walk you through anything that might pop up on the actual um, printer, which I'm really glad I did because it says a new firmware is available. I guess we'll go ahead and install that oh actually start the firmware several minutes okay so we'll go ahead and let it do the firmware update while i install the driver on my computer so i'm just going to google epson et 8550 driver you can use the cd that comes with it but to be honest if they've made any updates this is going to give you the most recent one so we're going to go to the epson one that has come up 8550, we want the downloads right here. We want to download our drivers and utility package. Go ahead and get that downloading and update. Do you want this? Yes, we want to go ahead and allow it to make updates. Okay, great. It's installing. I just rejected a little thing. It said that it wanted me to share. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and accept. Because, of course, we read this whole entire thing every time. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, um, additional agreements. We're just going to uncheck these. We don't want our information to be collected. I'm not going to do product registration because, to be honest, it's not going to matter. Again, I have voided the warranty because I put sublimation inks inside the printer. So, okay, make sure the printer's on. I have already finished filling my tanks. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and click next. It's downloading the software. It's still saying a firmware is due in here, but I think I'm going to wait and see what happens. 
with the, okay, we're going to wait and see what happens with the software on the computer before I update that firmware. So let's get this done first. So there's a couple different things we have to flip through, our license agreement, options, we're on setup, we still have installation, checking our functions and finishing. So it's connecting to the Wi-Fi on here. And luckily I already set it up so it should be able to connect fine. Um, it says the following products are detected. Yay, there is our printer. We're gonna go ahead and click update. Oh, no, we're going to click next. Sorry, update is if you have more. Click next. So it's updating or it's setting up our connection there. I don't know how long that'll take. It's just setting up the network. Yay. Okay. Setup is in progress. So while we're waiting on that, one neat thing that the little menu has here is it shows that you can, I think you can click this to get your output tray to either open or close. Like, I wonder if I click that. <gasps> it closes it back up. Oh, that's just beautiful. Love it. Very neat. I feel so fancy. Okay, so we have required software. That's the stuff that's grayed out. I'm gonna keep my scanner. I don't think I need my manuals. I'm gonna keep the Photo Plus, the Scan Smart. Um, we're keeping the utilities and the updater, and I'm not going to keep the connect software, um, at least as of right now. I don't need all that extra stuff, and I think I actually already have the connect software for my 2720. So I'm going to take some of that stuff off just because I don't need all this extra stuff clogging up my computer. So we're going to let that get installed. So we're already on the, this next step, installation. So we are almost there. Um, not too bad. Not a crazy installation. When we're done getting everything installed, we're gonna go into the printer settings and we're going to make a couple of adjustments. Now, the nice thing is again, because this has the photo black and the gray, we don't have to use from everything I have read from other users, we do not have to do a lot of changing of our settings. We're actually just going to pick a couple things and we're going to let it go. And it's supposed to print nice, vivid images. So we're going to print our test page. Again, that was why we put just some plain eight and a half by 11 in there. So we could make sure that um, <laughs> anytime we're printing stuff that is not a sublimation, it's going to print on just plain paper. So yay, we've got the right printer set up. Everything looks nice. Very good. All right. So we're done with that. So we're going to go to next. It's checking the firmware. It is probably going to say that we have a update, um, an update to do because it did say that it needed one more on there that I just kind of closed out of. Okay. Updating the firmware. You need to update your firmware. That's fine. Go ahead and update that. And hopefully that won't take very long, but if it looks like it's going to take a while, I will pause you guys and move on or um, turn you back on when it's over. Oh, oh, that's going pretty quick. So I think we'll be good. Almost done. Of course, you don't want to turn the power off when you're doing this. When the update's complete, it says that it's going to automatically turn on and off or turn off and then back on again. So you won't have to do any of that. It's a pretty sleek printer. I really like it. Can't wait to see how the prints go. Oh, I've got a 30 ounce skinny tumbler to do and I'm really excited that I don't have to crop my images together anymore. I can just print it on one sheet. It's going to make me super happy. And then I've got some clipboards to do that also were a little bit too large for my eight and a half by 14 on my 2720. So excited about that. It went from 66 to 71% and that took a couple minutes. It did just reboot, so I think it should be about done. Um, still says 71%, but I thought maybe it was going to do something. Oh, yep, there goes 83. And hopefully that should, it says from, oh, there we go. All right, your product is ready to use. So we're going to click finish. All right, so now that we have this up. I got a sheet of paper out so we can do a test print. I'm going to find my printers. Okay, so here is our ET8550. 
we're going to go to, we already printed a test page. So we're going to go to printing preferences. So the big thing we want to do is we're actually going to set our paper source because I'm always going to be using this for the 13 by 19. I'm going to go ahead and do rear paper feeder. I think that's the right one. Okay. And I'm going to change it to super B, which is that 13 by 19 size. Okay. I'm going to just leave it portrait. If I need to change it to landscape, I can do that per print. I'm going to put it on. This is where I might end up changing things around a little bit. Some of the videos I've watched on setting these up says to change it to premium presentation paper mat. But then everything that I've been reading as well has said that all you have to do is leave it on bright white paper and it prints perfect. So I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it on the bright white paper setting and just see what happens. Quality, we're going to change it to high. You could also make it best if you want. You can leave all of this stuff. And then we're going to go to more options. And we're not reducing or enlarge. It's got it automatically brought over the setting you picked here. And we are going to mirror image. You want to mirror because anytime you sublimate, almost everything needs to be mirrored. If it doesn't, I'd rather change that one printing manually, but this way I never have to print that output. It's going to automatically put it the same size. So color correction, you can go to custom advanced. You can do no color correction or under color, you can do just the Epson vivid. So I've heard either one of these work. Some people say to do an ICM and upload whatever the ink manufacturer has said are the color profiles you should have. But a lot of what I've read says that this, because of the six color ink, it really doesn't need a color adjustment. So I'm going to put no color adjustment. I think we're going to try that at first and we can always see what happens. But I've got my mirror on. I've changed my paper size. I've got my quality set at high. And for now I'm doing pl plain paper or bright white paper. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So now anytime I print from say Photoshop, it's going to automatically have my printing preferences in here, which is what I did with my 2720 and it helps quite a bit. I am going to printer properties. I'm going to rename this my 13 by 19 sublimation printer just so that I make sure I keep it straight and I'm going to click OK. So now it's listed under 13 by 19 sublimation printer. Very cool. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into Photoshop. We're going to do a test print. I have a print that I need to do for a 30 ounce skinny tumbler. So I'm going to put my paper in the back. So Ooh, that's loud. Okay. So it says in the other printer, it's face up like that. So we're going to try that because apparently I can't decipher those photos. All right, so let me find my sublimation design image. I'm just checking my canvas size here, 11 by 14. Whoa, that's fine. It should print. Let's see what it does. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click print. Now that I got my Photoshop to open, I'm going to switch it from my ET to my 13 by 19 sublimation printer. And let's switch it to, oh, it's still saying it's not. Okay, let's go to print settings. It's supposed to be managing it. It's It did not, it's supposed to be using my settings I set it at. So I guess we're gonna have to manage these ourselves. I don't know why it did not save those. We're gonna try the plain, the color, quality, high. Go to more options, custom. Wait, first we want a mirror. Advanced, we're doing no color correction. Okay, we're clicking okay. Okay, 
Now that's what it's, so I have plenty of room that if I wanted to print more on this file, I most certainly could. This could even turn, but for now, I don't have a lot to, I don't have anything else I need to print right this second. That's fine. We're just gonna print this one, and if I waste one sheet of paper or a couple sheets, it's fine. So let's go ahead and click print and see what happens. I am still having this issue with the printer saying that I need a firmware update. Whoop, whoop. Almost forgot about that part. Um, and I'm not really sure why. So I do want to show while this is printing, we'll see how long it takes. And hopefully I put that paper in correctly. Who knows? So this is the sublimation tumbler I already tried to do with this. Now, because I had only my larger paper, here is where I had to try and seam my two images together. And you can see that even though I had a decent seam, it still was just not perfect. It's pretty close, but not perfect. Um, so I'd rather only have to worry about the seam going down and not also have to worry about a seam going around. So this will allow me, wow, that actually prints really quickly compared to my other one. So we'll have to see how, yeah, okay. So um, not only did I get the bigger printer, but I also got a tumbler press. So that should help make it much better. Like I just did this tumbler, which is a 20 ounce skinny. And if you're not looking closely, you can't even see where I have that seam. So this printer mixed with that should make doing my tumblers a little bit better. Okay, so always remember that when you print, your colors are going to be a little bit dull. They brighten up when they're activated by the heat. So keep that in mind. This will need to dry. That printed very quickly. So I'll be interested to see how that prints. Actually, I have a copy of this. Let's compare it to the 2720, which is down here. And let's see what this looks like. So that does have me a little concerned because this is the 2720 and this is the 8550. So you can see some of my browns aren't quite as brown, whereas some of the others, yeah, some of the colors aren't quite as vivid. So I'd be interested to see how this prints. Now, I think we might go ahead and test it out with the other color profile and try the vivid. And let's just see if it matches more of the 2720. Because the 2720, those are the colors that I want. This is correct. These are the colors. So let's go in and adjust those print settings and see if we change it to the more options. Custom advanced. We're going to do color controls here. There we go. And just vivid. I believe is what it said to just do vivid. Okay, we're gonna click okay. And then let me get another piece of paper out. This paper is huge. It comes in 110 sheets for, I think it's like $42. It's a lot. I'll link it down below for you guys. Oh, but at least we do know that we put it in there correctly. So that's exciting. I keep mine wrapped. That's why I'm only putting one sheet at a time because I don't want any dust or anything getting to it. So even if I have to take one out at a time, unless I know I'm printing more than one. Okay, so let's try the Vivid and we'll go from there and see what happens, especially since that printed so quickly. And let's see how it compares to the 2720. Because the 2720 for this print, I mean, this took at least a good five minutes to print. So this printing like this, that printed awfully quickly, which makes me a little nervous, but it could also be that this is a photo printer a little bit more advanced, not really sure. So we'll see what comes out. Oh, wow. Holy cow. <laughs> Literally. Okay. Look how much more vibrant that is. Okay. Wow, still not exact, but I would say that's really close. If not, that might even be a better photo quality. Definitely better than this. 
So now the question is, what will it look like when it is pressed? I definitely am liking this vivid. I think that looks great. Still a little lighter here than I would necessarily like, but this also could have been a little darker than it needed to be. Not really sure until we press it. So yeah, I think we'll have to test this out. All right, guys. Well, that's about it. I mean, other than us testing out the prints and seeing how we like them, I think so far we've got it set up pretty well. You can always play with the different settings as you start pressing things and seeing what you like and what colors come out best. But so far that seems like it's going to work pretty well using the Vivid setting. So hopefully that'll keep on. love it it's pretty large so keep that in mind but it does print these nice large prints you can you know mix multiple things together like I've got clipboards I'm going to be doing so I'll be able to print two at a time and things like that but I still have my Epson 2720 just in case I want to just stick with the smaller things and I don't want to waste any big paper or switch out my paper I kind of like just having them set for different things so hopefully this video was helpful for you Enjoy, have fun with sublimating, and thanks for swinging by my channel. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you can be notified the next time I post a tutorial. Thanks for stopping by my channel. Bye!